What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another Rad and Dad channel video, or welcome if it's your first time. Either way, very glad to have you. I really didn't think I was going to do this video. I I don't even think I really want to do this video, but I do think it's important because I have several videos about the Ruach Atlas 4.0 on my channel um, previously from a little bit ago. I actually don't even have the helmet anymore. I recently sold it on Marketplace um, to a guy who was... Uh, that's besides the point. Um, bad experience, but uh, I did sell it. I don't have it anymore. Let's roll the intro. We'll get into exactly why I'm making this video. Riding down a YouTube channel, it's the 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 riding down a YouTube channel. All right, so this video is sponsored by. It's not spot. I just have my iPad. I'm going to be using it. I tried to do it on my phone to make it easy, but. The way that Ruruk has the site that I'm going to have to read stuff off of to compare and stuff, it displays huge on the phone, which is fine if you're looking and displaying it, but it's really hard to compare um, and definitely not like as far as like a video and stuff. So we're going to do it in the iPad. That's what I'm going to be looking down at. Um, when I bought the Atlas 4.0, I forget the original price and I can't find my email, unfortunately, but I want to say uh, I think I got the Shockwave for free, but I want to say it was... A l almost 500 bucks, maybe something like that. And I did have to pay for shipping at the time, whatever. And they marketed free returns um, or exchanges. That in fact is not true. Um, maybe that's true in the sense that they don't charge you a fee to return or exchange it. However, they 100% do because you guys, and I'll link the video here if you are not familiar with my experience that I had before, unfortunately with them when I had to change out the size due to their size chart that was incorrect. Um, but anyway, it was just an awful experience. I had to pay for shipping and it, that's besides the point. When you say free returns or exchanges, just like Revzilla or Tucker Speed or whatever like that, they say that, that should mean I can return mine free of charge and that's it. it. It should not include shipping. It should say just pay for shipping or something like that. Misleading advertisement, but that's besides the point. Anyway, when I bought mine, there was literally only three, or there was only one helmet. It was the Atlas, uh, it was the Ruark Atlas 4.0 and that was it. Now they have all 4.0s. They have a street version, a carbon version, and a track version. And this is why I'm making this video. I had to change the title of my other video to reflect what that helmet specifically was since now they have three different options, versions of that helmet, just so people understood what helmet exactly I was uh, talking about and reviewing. Um, and a lot of the price point stuff that I'm saying, people are comparing, getting mixed up, whatever. So, so that's why I'm saying this video. Um, this is kind of like a closure video. I also tried to give the helmet another shot um, and uh, now that I have a different bike and I rode it probably, uh, mileage is hard to say because there's a lot of stop and go in Florida, um, but probably for around 700 to 800 miles, something like that. Um, nothing crazy, but I tried to give it another fair shot. Um, I tried to use the, the Shockwave exclusively and everything like that. Um, so anyway, the Street 4.0 starts at $350. The Carbon 4.0 starts at 475, which would be the helmet I had. It would be comparable, or it is the same. It's the carbon. And then the track starts at 650. So they all, uh, well, actually, that's not true either. So, well, they're all Shockwave compatible, which we'll talk about the Shockwave at the end of this video because that's a whole, whole nother thing that grew up. I don't, 50 50 if they missed the mark or not, but we'll, we'll, we'll cover that in a minute. And these this is all my opinion, minus the stuff that I'm about to read off of their page. Um, so the main difference between the carbon track and street is that the carbon and the track are carbon fiber composite shells. The street is a fiberglass. So to me, that would mean, I mean, obviously you, you have the lower price, but that would mean that the carbon fiber shells would weigh less, right? So that's why when I found out that they have three different styles now, instead of just one actual helmet, I was like, oh, well, mine has to not be that one because mine was heavy and it was big. So the weight is 1,550 grams for the street, 1,600 for the carbon, and 1,550 for the track. So all you're losing is 50 grams going up $125 and transitioning from fiberglass to carbon fiber. 50 grams is not that much. I feel like it should be a little bit more than that. And then obviously they're all plus or minus 50 grams depending on what shell size you have. Like I said, they're all compatible with the Shockwave Audio. The... One that I had, which was the middle of the carbon, um, that is the only one with the Fidlock chin strap, which is that magnetic latch uh, system, which you guys know I don't like, but that's a personal preference. There's nothing wrong with it. It works very well as far as like staying there. And I will say the one nice thing about it is that it's super easy to take off. You literally just, when you're somewhere and you gotta take it off, you literally just grab the little tab and it, and it pops off. 
super easy to take off. Um, but I, I, to me, a lot of excess material, it's a bulky thing versus just kind of the strap. Just turn my screen back on to make sure I'm, I stay in, everything's working fine. Um, so the cheaper one has a regular double D and then the track version has a double D because they have to meet track standards um, and it can't have a fit lock on the track. So they are all DOT 22.06 certified. And then the track one in addition is ACU gold certified. They all use the same um, shield, which is whatever. Um, they all include a clear visor. The track version includes an upper sealed fit, says clear visor and upper sealed fit. Uh, and then in addition, um, the track includes a tinted visor with an upper sealed fit. And the carbon includes a tinted visor as well, which is true when I bought it, it did come with the clear and the tinted visor. Um, that is it uh, as far as you know where they different or where they differ. The only main other differences are that the headliner that Rurock uses, which is what they will, at the beginning it was their selling point. Now um, it's just the carbon in the street. Uh, it's called Ray Rayon, Rayon, I'm not sure if I'm butchering that uh, pronunciation, let me know, I probably am. But it's got like little uh, blue, almost kind of spongy round rubber tabs and it contributes to safety, Rurock claims, and then it also is a comfort thing and, and relieves like pressure points. <clears throat> uh, and then, um, the track comes with a pin lock insert. Um, and again, the, the price points are 350, 475, and 650. Now this coming with the two visors and right now, and I think they pretty much always do this. I think it's like a gimmick thing, but it comes with a shockwave if you buy a 4.0 um, carbon right now, which in my opinion, don't buy the street. Um, there's no reason to buy the street. It doesn't come with, first of all, it doesn't have the added comfort and safety uh, headliner in it, which to me is a big seller of the Rurock. They are actually a very incredibly comfortable interior. I really did like the fit of the interior. It was comfortable. Um, it was noise is subjective, so I won't even get into that. I'd say it's about medium in my opinion for noise compared to what I've tried. Um, but that headliner with that comfort, kind of like the blue stuff or whatever, that that's a big sell point. Um, and it's heavier. The Rurocs are already heavy at the same time. Oh, I I'm sorry. Scratch everything I said. I had a small aneurysm and I was talking to weight. Here's the part that boggles my mind. The carbon fiber version, the carbon helmet, which is the one I have at the time, the only one that's offered, actually weighs 50 grams more than the street, which is fiberglass, not the way it should be. And I would assume that's in two things. One, the rayon, rayon headliner that we were talking about, which uh, shouldn't really add that much weight. It's barely any rubber and it's just on the head part. It's not on the cheek pads or the uh, front, uh, or I'm sorry, the rear, like where the neckline is, the roll or anything like that. Um, so it's, it's, that's barely anything. I can't imagine that weighing 50 grams. The only other difference I can think of would be the fact that they include the Fidlock chin strap. So for 50 grams more than the fiberglass one, you can get a, in my opinion, a poorly done and annoying chin strap that is also not track certified or whatever. You know, so I don't know, to me, it's whatever. Um, now let's talk about, you know, if I were to recommend Rurock now because of the different price points. I would say don't waste money on the street at all. If you're gonna spend that amount of money and not get a super comfortable helmet um, and it's still fiberglass, I would say just don't buy it at all. Um, the other thing, Rurox customer service sucks. Again, I'll, uh, and I'm thankful now they're, uh, <coughs> I'm thankful now their reviews actually uh, show some stuff. Now they're showing it's 4.4 instead of five stars. That's only 120 reviews. I can guarantee you there's more reviews from different sites um, that are just privately reviewing them and stuff. Um, and I promise you, they're not getting all four and five stars. Uh, the carbon helmet, which is the one I got, um, it's just tough to say if I would recommend it or not. It's under $500. And in my opinion, it is very comfortable. Um, I would say if you if you really like the design, you really like the way the Ruroks look, um, that and, and maybe you really like the Fidlock chin strap, which I can't stand, but maybe you really like it. I know there's some people that really like it. Uh, then I would say maybe go ahead and, and go for it. It is still sub $500. You do still get a clear and a dark shield, which a lot of helmets nowadays do not come with, which is stupid. They should come with both, honestly. That, to me, that should every helmet should come with a clear and a dark. That's just dumb. Uh, and every helmet should come with the pin lock. But again, uh, I digress. Um, this does not have pin lock. Uh, I mean, you could buy it, obviously, but it doesn't have it. Um, 
The other benefit, and this is going to segue into my next point, uh, the other benefit to, to buying this, if you did purchase the carbon, um, you're going to get, at least right now as of me filming this video, you're going to get the Shockwave audio system. For those of you who are unsure what that is, it's the little audio system that almost, I don't even, it looks like a half moon kind of shape and it clicks in the back of the helmet um, and it stays there and the speakers come with it. The speakers Velcro to the sides where your ears are and then they plug into little ports in the helmet. It's kind of their integrated thing. There's really no wires floating around. It's streamlined. There's nothing sticking on the sides or anything like that. Um, which is not only better for aerodynamics, but also better for noise. You don't have something coming out and, and hitting the wind. Um, so this is why I think um, this is why I'm torn as far as like, in my opinion, if they if they miss the mark or not. The thought premise of having speakers that you just Velcro and plug into the little uh, ports on the side, like internally in the helmet, and then having a rear battery pack and operating, you know, kind of system that just plugs in and magnetically sits in the back like where it's supposed to form fit to the helmet and not stick out in the wind is an amazing idea. Uh, I wish more helmets like the Shoei Neotech 2 partnered with Cena. Cena sucks. Um, well, I've had that and I know not only do I not like Cena, but I can tell you that the setup that fits in the Neotech 2 is super quiet and it just, it, you're not going to hear anything with it. It sucks. Um, so I wish more helmet companies would manufacturer or would partner with manufacturers of, I mean, even if it is Cena, that's fine, but it just has to be a higher quality of what they're making. I mean, they have the ability to do it. Um, so that, that part is good that Ruroc is doing. I do appreciate that. I understand what they're going for. The quality of the audio is pretty solid that comes out of there and it does get very loud. I will give it that. I can't take anything away from that. What I can take away from it is the absolutely god awful operating user interface that they expect you to do, even without gloves, is a pain in the butt. And with gloves, you'd have a better chance of riding an Indian to a Harley bike night and having everybody tell you how cool it was and how much they wish they traded their Harley in for your Indian. There is just no way it's happening with gloves. There's no way. And even without gloves, like I said, not only are the buttons small on this thing, but the fact that you have to reach all the way around. Now, I'm not an, an I'm not a big individual. I'm also not a very tiny individual. I don't I have what I would assume is mediocre flexibility, not the best, but even just on a good day with just a hat on, it's not comfortable for me to reach all the way to my back. Now, Imagine if you're riding a, uh, wearing a riding jacket that adds a little bit more bulk, even a light summertime one that I would wear in Florida. Still a decent amount of bulk for your arms and stuff. Now a helmet. Now you got gloves on as well. And you're on a bike. And you have to take your hand off of your bike and actually deal with the interface that you're supposed to press buttons on. It sucks. It's garbage. In addition to that, the app sucks for it. There's like no real app. And, as far, and I don't know if they changed this, but at least the, the version that I have that they were having of that shockwave the the communication is like not bluetooth it goes based off your phones and you have to have your phones to do it and it almost like calls the other rider on their phone it's it's a weird thing and it's not very good but i don't do a lot of bluetooth stuff or uh, i do a lot of bluetooth i don't do a lot of rider communication with them i've only actually done it one time one trip ever several days and it was between two cardo units thankfully so it wasn't that bad so i can't tell you how good the quality is for that i could just tell you that the um the interface and the way that it meshes and communicates with other riders is way behind the times. I think if Rurock tries a little bit harder at the shockwave thing and makes the buttons a lot bigger, if they have one giant button all the way to the left, maybe one giant button all the way to the right and like one in the middle and just have them do different kind of things, I think maybe they would get a little bit better reviews out of that. I know a lot of people have the issues that, that I do as far as the user interface with that. Um, and I know a lot of people ditch it all together and wind up just putting their own Cardo or Sino or even Lexan um, on the side of the helmet. But then again, it, it just sucks because part of what you're paying for is the fact that this helmet is already integrated with all the setups and stuff for a Bluetooth system that it may that it that it you know it's designed for it with. And it just sucks that you you can't use that because of how bad it is. So um, I don't think I really even answered the first question I posed for myself. Would I recommend the Atlas 4.0 now with this new pricing uh, and everything? <sighs> no, still, still not. Honestly, um, there's just so many other, in my opinion, better quality helmets, more com well, about the same in comfort because the Ruach is very comfortable. Um, but there's just so many better quality helmets that offer uh, better um, 
features and usability, compatibility, and above all, to me, better customer service. Uh, like I said, I tell everybody when they, they comment and ask me like, well, what do you recommend? So I recommend a couple in, in around this price range. <clears throat> I would recommend the AGV K6. I would recommend, um, honestly, I would even recommend a Simpson helmet over this, uh, at least the Mod Bandit. I feel like it was just uh, a slightly better helmet overall. I know somebody's probably going to disagree with me and it's a little bit pricier, but I really did enjoy the Simpson more than the Ruach just for um, how it fit and, and the field of view and stuff. Um, so I would, I would recommend the AGV K6. Uh, I don't remember the name offhand and I should have probably researched it, but really anything you can get from Shoei or Arai within your price point that you're comfortable, I think would outperform the Ruroc. Um, maybe, maybe some of the lower budget options from Shoei and, uh, Arai, maybe their, their lower options would decrease a little bit as far as comfort compared to the Ruroc, but overall you're going to be getting a better package and the venting in the Ruroc Atlas 4.0 is almost non-existent. Um, and I live in Florida. Venting is very important for, I'm in Southwest Florida. Venting is very important for me. Uh, it's hot as heck 80% of the year. Um, and the Ruroc just does not cut it for venting. I would always have to ride with the uh, face shield all the way up, which is obviously not ideal because now you're losing all of your protection for your eyes. I did wear sunglasses, obviously, but uh, obviously still not ideal. It's not how you're supposed to do it. And if I say obviously one more time, I'm going to delete my channel. So, um, AGV K6, um, possibly the Simpson Mod Bandit. Uh, I would also say the Scorpion XOR1 Air. That's a great option. Um, in the non-carbon fiber version, still weighs less than Ruroc and costs less than the Ruroc. In the carbon fiber version, weighs definitely less than the Ruroc and costs around the same. I think it's like $20 more or something, but you can regularly get deals. If you're a military uh, member on Revzilla, you get a discount. And if it's something that Tucker Speed sells, you always get the Ride and Dad 10% discount. If price is no option for you, I would sh I would say uh, a Rye Corsair X and then a Shoei X14. I know they have the X15, but the X14 uh, is more of an upright kind of position as well as a tucked. Um, so for us Harley riders or any kind of cruiser, whether metric or anything, um, the X14 is going to be slightly more beneficial for you in terms of how the aerodynamics are already set up to cut through the wind and also to vent. Now, <laughs> this $650 helmet that Ruroc is selling, absolutely not. Don't buy that. Look at what you're getting. Just look at what you're getting. You're getting the same shell and the same weight minus 50 grams, I'm assuming because you're cutting out the Fidlock system, which does weigh a little bit extra because of the magnet, as the carbon, which is... $200 less, minus 25 bucks, but it's almost $200 less. Same compatibility with Shockwave. You're getting an ACU gold certified for track. Uh, same shields, includes everything minus an upper seal fitted, or upper, it says plus upper seal fitted. Guys, the only reason they're even including that is because their face shield seals poorly from the beginning on all of their helmets. That's the only reason they're even doing that. If you get an Arai, a Scorpion, a uh, Shoei, uh, not the Simpson. The Simpson has a little bit of issues with that in that department as well. Um, I said Scorpion, uh, Arai, uh, Shoei, AGV. If you get those helmets, he hell, even HJC, the Arfa lineup, if you get those helmets, that face shield seals good. It seals good all the way around. It's a quality made. You can tell the night and day difference between that and the Ruroc. And as a side note, I did purchase the blue uh, mirror lens for from Ruroc as well when I had the 4.0. That thing not only didn't really even look blue, it looked more like an iridium or a purple, which is not what the website makes it look like. But in addition to that, it wasn't very dark. The dark tinted that it came with was much darker, and I used the blue like one or two times just to test it out, and then it sat in a box. Waste of money. So don't, please, please do not spend money on the track version. There is no need for this unless you are doing something specifically where you need <clears throat> that ACU, what was it called? The ACU Gold Certified. Um, certifi certification on a helmet and you cannot find any other helmets with that certification, then I guess do it, but that's ridiculous. Um, I think it's much overpriced. I think a rock customer service is awful. I think they're trying. I do think they're trying, um, but I think they pay way too much for social media marketing and not nearly enough to actually fix their quality control and put out a high quality helmet for the price that they're offering. If you told me that the carbon helmet, the one I had and did the review on, if including the shockwave, if that was a $400 helmet or under, I would say worth every penny of it. Um, at $475, I just can't 
I can't in good faith say that they're worth it compared to the other ones. And the, and the main killer of this is the bad buffeting you get at speeds with this helmet on the highway. It's not very aerodynamic. It is huge. It's just a big chunky helmet. And the fact that it's not light, it's heavy and it's carbon fiber. When you have a carbon fiber helmet, you expect it to weigh less and be a relatively lightweight helmet. And this just ain't it. I think that's going to do it. Hopefully this cleared up kind of the stuff that I missed in my other reviews. And I know I don't have the helmet to talk about, but I sold it. And again, I didn't think I really had to do this, but then I found out that they have three different options. So I just wanted to cover it and just kind of clarify things for some of you guys who are maybe confused that saw my other videos or for whatever reason. I just felt like this was kind of a good closure thing to wrap it up. And hopefully Ruruk doesn't change their lineup again for the same helmet and offer different options with it and just moves on to like a 5.0 or something like that. I mean, they did a 1, 2, 3, and 4.0 within like, what was that? Like a year, year and a half or whatever when they released it. And they just kept shipping free ones out to all the YouTube superstars and paying everybody or not paying everybody, but giving them free stuff to say how great it was and this and that. And I know there are some of you guys that are going to be upset with this review video, or I don't even know what to, I don't even know if you can call it a review video. I know there's some of you guys that are going to be upset because you guys love the Rock. And if you guys love it, then good. Um, but I do know there's also part of you guys uh, of that group that loves the Rock that hasn't had experience with a good helmet. You guys never put on an $800 Arai or a $700 show or showy or even a, a $500 AGV. Um, and you don't really know how spoiled you can get with helmets and what to look for. Um, I help again, the HJC Arfa line, they're killing it. Um, and I really do want to get my hands on one of those soon, but I'm still really liking my showy X 14 and I am going to be doing a full review video on that, uh, pretty soon. That'll even include how to change out the sizing. Um, they're very modular on the inside as far as, you know, what sizing. something I do want to, I guess, cover real quick. Um, something that I really do like about the rock is their cheek pads in the liner have removable uh, layers to them. So you can get custom sizing with the cheek pads. I do actually really like that feature and I do wish that more helmet manufacturers did stuff like that. So again, Ruroc is doing some stuff that I do really like. The overall comfort of the helmet is high quality comfort. Um, and there, there's a lot of stuff that I do like about it, but overall for the price point and especially the customer service that they offer, I think there are much better options. Um, ah, that's just my take. You could disagree with me completely. That's just my opinion, but I if if you're out there listening and you actually like the Shockwave audio system as far as the user interface with it, just go ahead and unsubscribe from my channel because that means you are mentally unstable and I don't need that kind of energy uh, at my channel. You, you are insane if you think the user interface for that is okay uh, in any way. It's not. No, or audio quality, pretty good. Loud, you know, loudness, level of uh, loud, I will agree. That's pretty good, but user interface, terrible. Thank you guys very much for watching. I hope this kind of cleared some stuff up made for you for you. Or if you're still on the fence and you just found my channel and you're watching something for Ruroc in general, hopefully this, this helped you guys. Uh, make sure to click all my other review videos. You know, check them out for the Ruroc. You can see some more in-depth stuff. I actually go into detail with the helmet itself. But uh, other than that, I think I'm done. I talked for 20 minutes now, which is a lot. I'm sweating because it's, even though it's not technically summer, it's pretty much summer in Florida because the state is miserable. Thank you again for watching. Click all the links in the description. Save some stuff or save some money on some stuff. Get some cool stuff. See what I use for editing and video and stuff. All that jam. Check out my buddy's YouTube channel. I will see you guys on the next one. Make sure you subscribe. Like this video. It helps me and the channel out very much. And I appreciate every single one of you. Until the next time, ride safe, have fun. Dad. <laughs>